1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 40. Let all things be done decently in order. Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shah, call Halal, Yahweh Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shah, Waha Raka Quidash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone, the men who taught me this truth. Also, peace and blessings to my fellow yokesmen, the hopeful elect that continue in the work of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah. Also to the believers, the brothers and sisters that continue to believe upon the names Yahweh Wah Yahweh Shah in all fear, Shalom. Lord willing, this lesson will be edifying. This lesson is entitled, Without Order, There is No Progress. That's why the scripture tells us, in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 40, let all things be done decently in order. All mean 100%, not 90, okay? Because 90% is going to be in order, but the other 10 is going to be out of order, which brings confusion. And no progress is going to come out of a situation like that. Now, let's jump up to verse 31, because the Apostle Paul knew order. Because the Apostle Paul was taught by who? Our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. So, Apostle Paul had supreme knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of things. That's why the Apostle Paul wrote so many letters. All right? Because he had supreme understanding. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and 31. For ye may all prophesy, one by one, that all may learn, and all may be comforted. Now, that must be done decently in order. That's why the scripture says prophesy one by one. All right? Because the key goal is to what? Edify or to build the church. All right? The meaning of edification is to build. All right? In order to build something, everything must be done decently in order. All right? Step by step. Okay? If one man is speaking... The next man should be bringing out Yahweh Shai, which is being the reader. Or another man should be uh, looking up words. Another man should be holding the signs, so forth and so on, holding posts. That's the order of things, all right? All for the edification of the body. For ye may all prophesy one by one that all may learn, yeah, for the edification of the body. And all may be comforted. And that's by what? The scriptures, which is Yahweh Shai, the comforter. Verse 32 and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah does everything decently in order. He is not out of order. The Most High Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah wouldn't send a plumber to do electrician work. That's out of order. No progress is going to come out of that situation. That's why the Most High set up the prophets through Yahweh Shah to prophesy. Verse 33 and this is why, for the Most High is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. So, let's look up this word confusion, since we know that the Most High, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah, is not the author of confusion. The word confusion, the pronunciation in the Strong's G. Strong's G 181, Akatastasia. Akatastasia. It says, instability, a state of disorder. See? So, the Most High is not the author of a state of disorder. All right? Because he is a perfect power. He is a power of order. When we read the book of Sirach, chapter 32, all right? This is supreme knowledge and wisdom, all right? And this is the wisdom of Yahweh Shai, and it gives us the order of things or how to order ourselves in this thing of ours when edifying the body. I'm going to jump all the way down to verse 31. It says, matter of fact, verse 19, it says, Do nothing without advice. And when thou hast once done, repent not. So the scripture says, do nothing without advice. All right. And this is 
the order of things because the scripture in Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 15 tells us and it reads the way of a fool is right in his own eyes so the path that one would take all right without counsel all right is the way of a fool the way of a fool is right in his own eyes but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise all right so we want to be likened unto the wise all right and seek counsel and not just seek counsel but hearken unto that counsel and not just hearken unto that counsel um play out that counsel all right or do what that counsel says after hearing that counsel that would be likened unto the wise all right that's why the scripture tells us in ecclesiasticus 32 and 19 do nothing without advice so do nothing without counsel because you're going to be likened unto a fool it says and when thou has done once so if you do something without hearkening unto counsel repent not meaning don't do it again it says go not in a way wherein thou mayest fall and stumble not amongst the stones. And that's a way without counsel, all right? Without seeking the counsel of Yahweh Shai, because the scripture says, roughly paraphrasing, where two or three are gathered in my name's sake, I am also in the midst, roughly paraphrasing. So that's the counsel of Yahweh Shai, and that's the perfect order of things, all right? And that's how you gain progress through that perfect order. Now, when we jump down to verse verse 23 it says in every good work trust thy own soul for this is the keeping of the commandments he that believeth in the lord taketh heed to the commandment and he that trusteth in him shall fare never the worse all right so that's the order is to take heed to the commandment all right now there's 600 uh and something odd commandments all right, but Yahweh Shai said, take all the commandments, all right, and lay them on this, roughly paraphrasing, all right, that you have love one to another, all right, roughly paraphrasing, meaning to teach, okay, and we trust in that, that that's going to deliver our souls. That's the order of things. It says, he that believeth in the Lord, take heed to the commandment, which is ultimately, if you love Yahweh Shai, feed his sheep. And how do you uh, show the act of loving Yahweh Shai by feeding the sheep? edifying and that's done decently in order and he sh that trusteth in him shall fare never the worse that's right because Yahweh Shai is going to guide your steps properly if you follow the correct order which is um, performing the work of the Most High and what is that? Believing in Yahweh Shai St. John St. John 6 and round about the 28th verse tells us, it says, Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of the Most High? Verse 29, Yahweh Shah answered and said unto them, This is the work of the Most High, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. All right, so that's what we want to commit unto the end. All right, the works of the Most High, which is believing on Yahweh Shai, and, and we'll never fare the worse. Okay, because uh, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 19 tells us it reads, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us work who believe? according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Hamashiach, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Verse 22, and have put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things in the church. So Yahweh Shai is the head, all right? And if we follow the head, which us being the body, 
we will never fare worse. And that's believing in him unto the end. All right. Verse 23, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. All right. St. John 3 and 18. It says. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of the Most High. Acts 4 and 12 tells us there is no other name, all right, up under the heavens, roughly paraphrased, that we are going to be saved by. And that name is a nomen omen. Nomen omen means name prediction, all right? Yah meaning he, Hawashah means delivers or saves, all right? And if we believe in that name and believe that Yahushua is the head and he was raised from the dead, all right, and he gave himself up to the cross, he shed his blood for the elect, all right? If you believe, you're going to be saved if we are part of that number, okay? All the way up to the end. That's why the scripture says, he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. That's the order of things. Now, the apostle Paul, which we spoke earlier, and said that he was taught by Yahweh Shai and he had supreme knowledge and wisdom, the apostle Paul knew the ordinance of things, all right? 1 Corinthians 11 and 1, be ye followers of me, even as I am of Hamashiach. So you follow Hamashiach by following the men that the Most High through Hamashiach have set up, which are the prophets. Verse 2, now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things. All right, our pure minds have been stirred up by the way of remembrance. And keep the ordinance, all right, keep the ordinance. As I deliver them to you. But I would have you to know that the head of every man is Mashiach, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Mashiach is the Most High, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. All right? So that's the ordinance of things. Okay? From the Most High all the way down, okay, to the woman. That's the ordinance of things. Now, before I close out, I want to give one perfect example of order that's found in the book of St. John, chapter 20, starting at verse 1, okay? And it reads, St. John 20 and 1, The first day of the week come of Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, into the sepulchre, and see if the stone taken away from the sepulcher. And this is where Yahweh Shai was buried. So Mary Magdalene, all right, early in the morning, came to the sepulcher, all right, and seeing the stone roll back, and the body of Yahweh Shai gone. So she is thinking someone have stolen the body of our Lord. Verse 2, Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciples. So right there, Mary Magdalene was in order. Because she went to Simon Peter first about the situation that she just um, found out about the body was gone from the sepulcher. That's being in order. Why? Because Peter was the head of the church. And to the other disciple. And then she went to the other disciple, whom Yahweh Shai loveth, which is uh, John the Beloved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Verse 3, Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulcher. Verse 4, so they ran both together. So Peter, the head of the church, and that other disciple whom Yahweh Shai loveth, all right, they ran together. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter. So John the beloved, whom Yahweh Shai loveth, outran Peter. All right, Peter was running like... Um, uh, Jack adjoined Kersey, so to speak, all right? And that other disciple was running like Usain Bolt, all right? And the other disciple, which is John the Beloved, outran Peter and came first to the sepulcher. You can see him full of adrenaline, thinking somebody have taken the body of our Lord. They're trying to hurry up and get to the sepulcher, all right? But just so happened, John the Beloved was faster, faster than Peter. He outran Peter. And Peter was the head of the church, remember? Verse 5, and he stooped down and looked in, 
saw the linen clove lying, yet went he not in. So remember, the other disciple whom Yahweh loved, he beat Peter, all right, to the sepulcher. And he stooped down and he looked in, okay? Why didn't he go in? Because the scripture says, yet he went not in. Verse 6, then cometh Simon Peter following him, all right? So John the Beloved was fast. He outran Peter. The scripture said, then cometh Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and seeing the linen clothes lying and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself, then went in also that other disciple. See, John the Beloved, whom Yahweh loved, was in perfect order. Even though he outran Peter, all right, the disciple Peter, both was disciples at that time, which later on became apostles of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh all right, he knew the order, okay? He was in total order. Even though he outran Peter, he stopped and didn't go in the sepulcher first. He allowed his head to go in first. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed, all right? So I can end it right there. I just wanted to give that perfect example of order, all right? Because without order, there is no progress. And you see the order of things because John the Beloved knew the order of things. Even though he outran Peter once again, he didn't go in the sepulcher first. He waited on the head to go in first, and then he went in. All in order, even though he was the beloved of Yahweh Shot. All right? But he knew Peter was the head, and he followed order. All right? And that's the mindset that we want to be in. All right? Which is doing all things, what? Decently in order. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 40. Let all things be done decently in order. Call Halal, Yahweh, Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shah, Waha Raka Quidash. I want to give double honor to the men who taught me this truth, the apostles and elders of the great millstone. Lord willing, this lesson made sense and that this was edifying. Shalom, DTA.